Hi, this is George Alger, and welcome to another segment of Our Ventura TV. Today's guests are Risa Horowitz and Mara Alexandru, who are members of Americans for Safe Access. Welcome. Hi. Thank you. So let's first of all just describe what the group actually is. And why don't we start with you, Risa? Oh, no? Okay. Well, actually, yeah, I was going to defer to me. Yeah. Well, Americans for Safe Access are... Um, is an, it's a national organization, nonprofit national organization, and we are um, members of an action group in Ventura that are put together essentially to provide um, safe access to um, research and um, to medical cannabis and all of its therapeutic uses. Good. So it's been in the news a lot recently with laws changing around the country mm -hmm. and. Um, is that a result of your group or in many groups or oh, how does the Americans for Safe Access fit into the laws that are changing regarding marijuana and medical use? Um, Americans for Safe Access started in the early 2000s and it came about as a result of um, people in the San Francisco Bay Area needing access to medicine um, to alleviate some of the discomfort and effects of AIDS. Um, but what they also started to find was that it was also beneficial for a lot of other illnesses. Um, it is beneficial for people with cancers, suffering from nausea, um, people with a variety of other illnesses, including Crohn's disease, um, which Mara um, can talk to a little bit later, and um, MS, chronic pain, um, epilepsy, asthma, and a variety of other illnesses are today being effectively, safely being treated with medical cannabis. Good. Now, there are, so I've read a number of studies that also support what you're saying. And of course, there's, I've also read, you know, articles that, you know, look at the idea that legalizing marijuana or moving in that direction is going to have negative repercussions on society. Could you speak to that? Absolutely. Unfortunately, I think the negative connotations come about as a result of the stigmatization of medical cannabis in our society today. This all started back in the um, 30s with, a, uh, with the predecessor to the FBI um, who had some issues with people of color and they started to try to, set, to imply that cannabis led to um, problematic behavior among people of color. And slowly, the laws started changing and it became really restrictive. Medical cannabis has been used for thousands of years to treat a variety of illnesses internationally. And it was only as a result of what happened in the United States that the laws internationally changed and it became um, uh, uh, illegal. Um, today, as a result of having the internet, people are starting to learn what medical cannabis really is and find out there are a variety of benefits. In, the, in regards to why there's this element of the, uh, the black market and crime, well, if you prohibit something, what ends up happening? That's exactly what people are going to want. When access is given to people, it, um, what they have found in studies internationally is um, initially there's a spike in usage and then the spike just levels out and actually goes down. They found this in um, Portugal as well as in um, the Netherlands. And so we've, we are advocating for um, cautious, safe access for individuals um, in our community. And by cautious, we would like to see, for example, the working group created in Ventura um, to discuss and figure out a way that patients who need this type of medication can have access to safe medicine. And what does that typically mean? I mean, I've heard that there are stores, I guess, that you can go to to buy it. Is that what that means by safe access? Regrettably, that's not entirely um, the only part of the element, the only part of the equation. The problem with safe access is 
we want to make sure that the medication that individuals are taking for their ailments it does not contain any um, toxins, any mm -hmm. pesticides, any insects, any mold, any mildew, and a variety of other things that can happen to plants as they're being grown. Regretfully, to try to grow your own medicine is not always a viable um, option for people. Some people are just not capable of it. I myself have tried numerous times. I've been unsuccessful every single time. And the other problem is that when you create this stigma, you have, you have elements of the black market trying to become involved in this whole thing. And that's when it becomes unsafe. Because people, when you don't have stores, as you mentioned, to go to to purchase these medications, what happens is people end up going out on the black market to find their medication. That's when you have problems. You have people being ripped off, you have people being murdered, you have people being stole, you know, robbed or shot and whatnot. It only exacerbates an already difficult situation. In Ventura County right now, as a result of a recent ban as of uh, December 2013, there is no more possibility for legal distribution in terms of a dispensary or delivery services. And technically, if you were to grow your own, there's that fear of someone trying to break in and rob you. You have two elements. You have uh, the element of somebody from the black market, um, a thief, somebody like that, that could steal from you. And then there's always the, the chance that um, somebody from the federal government so could come in. And the interesting part of that is that um, even though it is not actually federally legal yet, it is legal in the state of California. And in, in 22, I believe now, Risa? For people who have medical recommendations. Absolutely. It's for only for people with medical recommendations, mind you. Now, on that point, though, I mean, um, isn't there a certain amount of folks that are now using medical marijuana that really don't have a medical condition? I won't, I won't speak to that only because I don't know each person who has a recommendation and what they're, what's in their heart. I know the people that I have in, interacted with. I know myself personally. And most of the people that I have met really need the medicine for their particular chronic situations. Um, but I think that in terms of the, the um, criminal element, I think that will be mitigated ultimately mm -hmm. once we come up with responsible, safe um, ways of providing medicine for patients. We don't want to be criminals. No. We're not criminals. We want to be people who are, are taking care of our bodies in a way that benefit us. There's a child in Mendocino, excuse me, in um, Fresno named Jaden David. He has seizures that precipitated him having to go to the emergency room for grand mal seizures over 45 times between the time he was born and the time he reached his fifth birthday. He was on a cornucopia of medications. He is now down to two pharmaceutical drugs and a high CBD form of medical cannabis. There's a problem in our society today with people thinking, oh, just use the high CBD, because really that leaves you straight. It doesn't have any of the inebriating effects. The problem is a certain amount of THC, which is the psychoactive part of the mm -hmm. cannabis plant, psychoactive being the part of the plant that will make someone feel high or inebriated. There's a certain amount of that that has to be in the medicine for for people to be able to, for the CBD to work properly. They work in conjunction. Some people can take a little bit higher forms of THC than others, and some people can't have almost any. When you're giving it to a child, of course, you want the lowest dose of, uh, of something that would be inebriating, but unfortunately, it depends upon each person, and each person has different um, strains of the plant that might benefit them, as well as um, different ratios. 
And, and today what we have essentially um, is a situation where we're growing plants and we don't always know exactly what type of medicine mm -hmm. you're receiving because it's not always lab tested. And that's one of the things that Americans for Safe Access is advocating for, for medicinal cannabis patients. The, the ability to access safe medicine with, um, that, that, will, that is the best medicine for that particular patient. Exactly. And it's a learning yeah. curve. Just as when you go to a regular physician and you're getting medicine, that first pill that he prescribes for you is not always the pill that you'll continue to, to remain on. He might have to lower the dose, raise the dose, give you that with another pill. And by the same token, something similar to that happens with medical cannabis. Good. Now, could you define what CBD and THC are? Certainly. CBD is cannabidol. And cannabidol is one of the many elements that is present in cannabis along with THC. And THC is tetrahydrocannabinol. Hydrocannabinol. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and THC, as I had mentioned earlier, is the part of the medicine that will sometimes make people high. Um, but for certain ailments, that's what is needed. For example, there are some people who are extremely depressed who will benefit from certain types of um, medicines that contain high levels of THC. Um, in terms of the CBD, the CBD is very beneficial because that is the element that will oftentimes um, give anti-inflammatory properties mm -hmm. to the individual. Anti-inflammatory being if you are in pain, it takes down the inflammation, it takes down the swelling. And so these are all medicines that are out there today that we, we would like people who decide this is the way they want to go. They want to approach it through a, a, a um, more um, holistic mm -hmm. way of treating their ailments. This is, a, uh, this is a way they can approach the, um, the situation. Good. Now we're running out of time here, but okay. um, I'm wondering if there's a way that people could get in touch with you. It's kind of a hot topic, as I know you know, and there's a conversation that's going on about this. So how could anyone, any of the viewers, participate in this conversation? Well, they can come to one of our monthly meetings, which is the first Tuesday of every month. Um, it's at the EP Forest. Let me give you the information exactly, sure. if I may. Um, it's at the uh, E.P. Foster Library. It's at 651 East Main Street in Ventura. The meeting starts at 6.30. They generally go to about 8 o'clock. Our next meeting is March 11th. We're not having a meeting in April, and then the following meeting will be on Tuesday, May 13th at 6.30 again. So they, they, we're, it's open to everyone, and we'd love to have anybody that is interested be there. Um, they can also email us for any more information at VenturaASA at gmail.com. That's VenturaASA at gmail.com. Good. Now, is there a website? Uh, there is. There's a national website, which I don't have in my head either, and that is safeaccessnow.org. Um, safeaccessnow.org. And there is every bit of information. Uh, legal, uh, medical, anything anybody really wants to know is on that website. Good. Okay, so we're just about ready to close the show. Is there a summating message you'd like to convey to the viewers? I would like to ask the viewers to contact their elected officials and write to them asking for a working group to be created in each of their cities. Because right now, each of the cities in Ventura County have made medical cannabis um, a, an illegal proposition. The closest place um, people can go in this county right now to um, go to a dispensary and find medicine is in LA. That's, a, that's really a problem for a lot of the patients who are very ill or, or on limited incomes. And many people today are graying people like myself and they're, they're having more and more issues as they get older, and this is a way for them to be able to um, treat
try to see that maybe there's some medicine that might benefit them down the road. But I would really encourage them to try to contact their local officials, speak to everyone they can, and try to educate themselves as much as, as possible. They're always welcome to our meetings, always. and yeah. um, we welcome new members. Thank Absolutely. you, Lisa. Thank you. Thank you, Mara. My pleasure. This is George Alger signing off for this edition of Our Ventura TV. Until we meet again.